So you're probably a filmmaker like myself, an indie filmmaker with no budget, and you have visions and you have goals and, and you have this idea of how you're gonna make your film, but the one thing that typically holds us back are finances. Today we're gonna talk about how we made our film Rex Park Curse of the Golden Buddha, so stay tuned. <laughs> Now you owe me 10K. Get out of my way. It's worth $15,000. Hey, hey. It just knows it broke pumps. Yeah. We have to steal that boot. By the way, I'll be late on rent this month. So, so are, are we. we. We'll do it this evening. We can pay off Boogie and our rent. Action. Action. Hey, can I get some duck sauce? What's her body, her decision? Who are you? Did Super Saiyan got blue, blue Vegeta? Don't talk to me. Well, the inside out ass. Don't have time, Mr. Bruno. You know, they say never bring a knife to a gunfight. Ran out of juice, my Tesla on the highway. Five bad strippers with the flippers getting sideways. X said that wouldn't make it, now she trying to find me. Hide your Rogan kicker in the face, kind of. I finally have you. Because we gotta get that Buddha statue back. Oh, hell no. You stupid statue, bitches. Rex Park, Curse of the Golden Buddha. Oh. Actually, that looks fucking great. Uh, right now, I feel like a toothpick. I have a toothpick, toothpick, keep it. One of the questions I get is how did you get into filmmaking? How did you start? So, I grew up in Hawaii. I was born and raised in Oahu, and I spent my time between Hawaii and Georgia. And I had—I never had an idea or thought of I wanted to be a filmmaker or I wanted to be an actor or a director or writer. None of that stuff ever crossed my mind. I was just an island kid who used to watch and one mixtapes, and I wanted to play basketball, and that was it. Currently 5 a.m. Uh, just got to caffeine and octane. Um, wait on Jason to pull up, which, oh, that's not him. Uh, we're gonna try to get this uh, intro scene. Basically, we're just gonna ask a bunch of people here with dope ass cars, see if they wanna, you know, film a couple, couple of clips in a movie, and uh, hopefully we can get it done today. If not, there's always next month. You just gotta ask, and now you have an expensive scene because we up here early thanks to my man uh, Luca. We out here early, and now we can get it done. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So we're shooting a feature film. Uh, we've been shooting since March. We're pretty much almost done. Huh? That's two. Yep. Yeah. Got super. We got the I Z. Like this. Oh yeah, this is this is pretty this is pretty sick. Not gonna lie. Hi. How you doing, sir? When I was in high school, um, I lost my license for street racing. And um, I wasn't street racing. A friend of mine, who's a good friend of mine, uh, really one of my best friends, we were driving side by side and we had exhausts on our cars. And we were big into the Fast and the Furious tuner scene. And we were talking, right? Uh, we were talking over the exhaust and a cop, you know, pulled us over and gave us tickets and my license became suspended. Man's gotta explain himself. See what's going on here. I got, got 20 minutes. Uh, then we have our and then we have the front. So that's the see the see the man walking towards the city green. And the front, you can have it where the super's parked now. Do you want me to park just that way? Yep. Okay, yeah, we about to do that. We got, we got 20 minutes. He's giving the security guard's giving us 20 minutes. So that's enough. I'm, I'm gonna knock my line out. We're gonna get my line in one take. That's how we do this. From that, my mom heard something on the radio about uh, iPop and, and, and I forget what the name is, but it was, hey, come out to this acting thing and maybe your kid will be a star. So she forced me to go. I didn't want to go. She was like, you're going to go. So we went to this event and uh, they asked in front of this auditorium that was packed with moms and kids and all this stuff, does anyone want to volunteer? I just raised my hand up. I said, I'll do it. You know, I didn't really think of anything. He said, perform this commercial right now. I, perform, I performed the commercial in front of everybody. And I did it so well that he offered me to go to this acting school for free. And they would pay my uh, tuition. They would pay for me to go out to Vegas for a show. 
I think it was like K-pop or I-pop or something like that. So I went to the school, I went out to Vegas, I got me an agent and all that stuff. And the moment I graduated, I went out to Hollywood without knowing anybody. Yep. Okay. Now, hold up, one question. Yeah. Is Luke out here with uh, Could you put something? That's uh, what I'm thinking to hold it. In, actually, you know what? Put something underneath. It's not know. moving now. No, you can put it back. Uh, oh, now. Yeah. Yeah. Find locations that don't cost any money. That's right. Thanks to my man Luke over here. Hell yeah. I get the moolah by Tuesday. Watch out, watch out. Got like 12 flights to go down. Right? You can see Atlanta through one of these holes. I think let's wow, do man. Let's do, the other let's side. do this, man. Yeah. Through one of these holes, you can see downtown. Fast forward, I went through the whole circuit um, casting calls, booked commercials, booked films. Uh, booked print jobs and just went through that whole cattle call of auditioning. My goal for that was to be the Asian Will Smith. That was always my goal. And it never panned out. One of the things for me, for the Asian community, that I wanted to have Asian actors elevate beyond being the sidekick or being the, the comedic relief or demasculated in a way that we typically are, right? Hollywood has almost programmed the world to look at Asian males, especially Asian American males, as almost a second rated. So what made you decide to audition for this role? Um, actually, funny enough, I submitted to audition for another role. I don't remember which one it was, but it wasn't the lead. And um, Jason messaged me and he was like, hey, I want you to read for Zulu. And I was like, okay. And um, sent me those sides and I thought it was hilarious. And that's, that's that. <laughs> what got you interested in this film? Was it the comedy? Was it just the dynamic of the characters? I think uh, definitely the characters. Um, I, I really thought that the main characters it seemed like they had like a really great chemistry. <laughs> so uh, speaking of chemistry, uh, what is the chemistry like on set? Well, um, <laughs> everyone's really awesome. Um, it's a small crew and I think we all just like vibe really well together. Um, we've had like a couple improvs during scenes and especially the boys like to improv for like a really long time and I'm just like okay <laughs> how long is this gonna go on for but it cracks me up like I almost uh, great character yeah I, I'm like cracking up or I have broken character because it's so funny he pucks his head up boom big money ball, money ball. that means tall that means yeah. tall I knew it Bro, bro, I love you, bro. I love like you, hug, man. I really love you, sir. That was good. One action. So, what are you ordering a muffin latte with cream, Stacy? Well, I'm sorry that I ordered something, but I felt like I really needed right now. It's actually really good. Yeah, just talk. I know. I thought about that. I just don't know how to start it. Um, how did I get involved with Rex Park? Um, living with him and having him mentor me and. <clears throat> Just being really grateful for him. I just feel like this is something he really wanted to do and I'll be there to help make it happen, you know? And I gotta say, that experience was like no other. I was into theater in high school. I mean, I, I enjoyed being on stage, doing everything. Um, never really thought of it as a career though. Uh, just, cause, just cause I thought it was so, you know, hard to get into, hard to break into the industry. Like, I just figured that was impossible. It's only stuff you see in movies. See, I never really thought that was obtainable. Could I make a career out of this? Like, really? Is this actually a possibility? And then I met this guy uh, at a Waffle House, and he was like, hey, you, you have the look that a casting director I know is looking for. Blonde hair, blue eyes. Have you ever thought about being in movies, TV, commercials? I was like, what?
Alright, that shit should help. That shit is smart. Oh, hold on. It's good, it's good. Mm -hmm. It'll hold. Bro, I'm about to actually did a perfect word level. You want to audition for this role? Well, to be honest, I love Black Description because it's me. You know what I'm saying? Goofy, funny guy. Plus, the um, the synopsis was out, out of this world. Like, it was different from what I usually get. So I'm like, yeah, I had to try it, man. I had to submit. I'm surprised I got it, though. But I'm really happy I got it. All right, now what's the chemistry like on set? Like, what would you to say? To be honest, I think everybody cool. Everybody like family. You know what I'm saying? Zulu can be weird sometimes, though, but... You know, she all right. I'm playing now. It's really cool. I don't know. It is, um, I, I really like the chemistry here. Everybody's like family. Nobody just mental or nothing. Everything cool. All right. And what's your, uh, what's your favorite thing about this movie? Um, you know, black dildos. So I'm playing now. Really, the, it's, um, the free ballness, you know? There's no stress. You just come in here, be you, have fun. And, um, Jay, he's a good director. he make you feel comfortable. So it's like, you're not, you're not forcing anything in the script because, you could be you. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So I like uh, Jay gives us freedom to be us. When I went out to, when I was in Hollywood and I would go out to all these casting calls and stuff, it just never materialized for me. Um, and I'll say, I'm not the best at auditioning. I'm just not, I don't know what it is. I feed off of people's energy. I'm just not. Not to say I'm the greatest actor either, but I know that when it's time to act, I can do it. Anyways, it didn't pan out and 15 years later, I noticed that Asians were still not the Batmans or the Tom Cruises in Mission Impossible or the leads in Fast and the Furious. We still were the second, third picks, right? We were still the side characters. And I wanted to change that. So I secured for the Boogie Bruno scene, mm -hmm. I secured a car dealership where we're gonna use a G-Wagon as the Mercedes inside. Are you of the, serious? Of the dealership. Oh! So then, not only that. God damn! Not only that, but right now I'm waiting to hear back from a guy who owns an ice skating ring for hockey. Uh -huh. And that's where the final gun scene is going to be. The final scene with Boogie Bruno, Larson, and myself. Bro, I got a problem with that shit. Cool as hell. All right, bet. So that led me to writing, directing, producing, editing, creating stories where an Asian actor plays the lead in non-Asian roles. And why this is so crucial to me is in my opinion you'll never break the norm or what the standard is that hollywood set up for 80 90 years right you'll never break it if you constantly create stories and not to say this is bad because it's fantastic the more that asians are seen on film the better but if you constantly create stories about asian families and you have asians playing asian roles and asian family roles then it doesn't break the norm because that's what you're supposed to cast in that role. In order to break the norm, you have to create stories like Mission Impossible, Fast and the Furious, uh, Avatar, you know, Batman, things of that nature where the Asian guy is the lead and it has nothing to do with his heritage or where he's from or what he looks like. He just so happens to be the lead. That's how you continue to to change minds of people. It's, it's kind of like when they came out with Black Panther. Now you had a whole community, kids, adults, now they're able to see themselves in this character and that was powerful. And that's what I try to do with my films is, is show the next generation, show the current generation that we can do that too. Um, and that's why I decided to make Rex Park Curse of the Golden Buddha, and that's why our second film, Four Amigos, is in pre-production now. Yeah, um, I don't know a whole lot of people here. Like I started in LA, I knew a lot of people there. Uh -huh. I worked in New York a lot, and then I came here, and I'm like, I don't know nobody. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly, exactly. Uh, so what I'm thinking is, when you put me in blacks okay. to make it more interesting, you're gonna put us on that side in between these canisters. Okay. So we end up here. Because it makes sense for us to dance that way. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Do you want me to cut you off when you're yeah, you can ad lib with me there before I go in. Because once I say after this video, young hit me like a young Britney Spears. And then um Action. Action.
how did I start the film, right? I'm, I, I, I'm a network engineer and I was working in IT and anyone knows that works in IT, you're either really busy or you have downtime. And in the downtime, I started writing the script for Rex Park knowing that there wasn't a budget. So I wrote as creative as possible with the limit of finances. And I would write and I would write and I would dedicate myself a page or two a day, no matter what, just one or two pages. Then at that rate, in 30 days, 60 days, I would have a full script. I ended up finishing the script in about two to three weeks. And eventually when you get into a rhythm, the script starts writing itself. From that point, I broke the scenes down into locations. So I knew at this location, we could shoot these six scenes done. This location, we could shoot these three scenes done. And I just separated them so it was easier. Then I started looking at items I needed. Then I went and started purchasing, collecting those items over time. Uh, the key here is don't quit your day job. Do not quit your day job, right? You have to have a hustle to alleviate the stress of your creativity. This is important because when I was in Hollywood and all I did was act, right? I had great years and in my great years, I made 40, $50,000 and I thought, oh, that was awesome. But I always struggled, right? I struggled with, oh, I gotta pay bills and all this stuff. I didn't know when my next job or check was coming in. That's not the life to live. My name is Nick Smith and this is kind of my first gig that I ever booked. So I'm sitting around at home and my wife's like, hey, can you, can you like go out and like fucking do something? You know, like you can't just sit like, there's movies and stuff in Atlanta, so I, I started throwing my name out. I think backstage, uh, uh, Actors Access, or Access Actors. Actors Access? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. And so Rex actually uh, messaged me on backstage saying, hey, you're the perfect fit for this role. And it was the first contact I had with, with anything. And I said, sure, you know, obviously, why not? That's how you danced for all the uh, no, we're something. gonna change that. What do we want? Uh, we can, we can, we can, we can actually just remove it. Boogie's gonna look at him and be like, Luca! And then when he looks back... Right, okay, and then, um, because there's not, he's not shooting at me. Your second hustle, your creativity, only ever becomes your main hustle when it starts creating the finances to take over your main hustle for me. That's the advice I live by because I'm married, I have kids, I have responsibilities. I can't just go all into the creativity anymore. I did that in my early 20s and it didn't work out the way it should have or the way it was planned to. I don't know because now I'm making my own film so clearly the universe works in, in mysterious ways. So I came up with the script, then I started casting. I went on backstage, I went on Actors Access, uh, Craigslist, put out the ads and, and actors started to submit. Now, key point to all you actors out there that want to act, that want to be in film, that want to do all this stuff, that want to create. There's a few things you have to do. One, show up. One, send in your audition tapes. And another one is just, you have to put in the action. You guys don't know how many times I have hundreds and hundreds of auditions. I'm like, hey, send me an audition tape. Three lines, three, four lines, simple, right? I don't do callbacks because I don't want to waste people's time. Just give me three or four lines. Out of 100, maybe 15 will send in audition tapes. So for all you actors out there, you want to one up on someone, just show up. People come here and they think it's all about money. It's about power, honor, respect. Where it ain't even a handshake. I was trying to see if we could get on the roof. We can't get on the roof. I, I tried. It's like blocked off for some reason. Um, so yeah, no roof access, but hey, we're still here. We're still out here. We're still doing things. Anybody goes to the store with that? She still don't know what scene to come. Every time I do that, she never know what scene that comes from. That's what I do. Yes, I do. You know what scene it comes from? Well, you better put the with that? Yeah. Yeah, this time's this way. Can you guys let's see the with that? What's up? My name is Ashanti Harris. I found out about this movie because, awesomely, my boyfriend is Boogie Bruno. So um, he told me about it and luckily there was a little part in it for me and I filled the role. And I think this is gonna be great. It's hilarious. Um, 
there's so many funny parts to it. Um, I've been acting since 2017. Um, I have a couple of roles here and there. Um, I have a one-year-old daughter who follows me around everywhere, um, mm -hmm. on set, off set. Uh, and she's my inspiration for acting. And I'm happy to have been a little part of this. I can't wait to see it. I use the Black Magic Pocket Cinema Camera 6K. I use a Sigma 18 to 35 lens, uh, a tripod from eBay, a shoulder rig from eBay, and lights from eBay, and a Samsung SSD card, and that's it. That's all we use to film this film. And and if you look at it, it looks pretty darn good. First time filming, no experience uh, behind the camera, uh, no experience directing, and that was it. We shot it, we got it done in about 13 Sundays, and the, the movie, we thought about it, we shot it, edited it, everything within a year. So not, that, that's not to say that, hey, if you took two years, it would have been better or anything like that. That's just to say, this is what we did. So if we can do it, you can do it. If I can do it, you can do it. You know, there's no experience. There's no uncle that's, that has connections. There's no, I watched YouTube, like all of you, right? I watched, um, uh, you know, Indie Film Hustle, Jay Hoare, and all these guys talk about filming and, and this and that. And really, it's just about creating your vision that you have and then applying the action to that vision and then consistently applying that action. So there's a phrase I live by, DCA. Decide, commit, apply. Decide what you want to do, commit to that decision, apply the action, and you'll always have an end result that is successful and better than doing nothing. So, action. With the camera gear, the crew, um, the script, it was about getting locations. I went to Airbnb uh, for majority of the locations. I went to restaurants. I went to, to local uh, businesses. A lot of people said, no, they're not interested. And the ones that did are the ones we chose and the ones we used. So you're going to get a lot of no's, but each no is a, is a one step closer to a yes. So you just got to keep pushing forward and you just got to keep getting after it. And once we secured those locations... You put it in a call sheet date, you have people show up, and you get it done. And there were days where actors didn't show up. They didn't give me a call, they didn't give me a notice, they just didn't show up, they ghosted me. We shot around it. That's what you do, you just, you have to be versatile. You can't just stick like, no, this is what it is, this is what it has to be. When you're doing indie, low budget filmmaking, you have to be versatile because things will change, moments will arise. We changed whole scenes because actors had an emergency where they couldn't make it that day, and all, every, we were already there. So we changed the whole scene, the dialogue and everything to, to make that work. And that's what you have to do. So be versatile, be vigilant, be committed, get it done. Once it hit the wind. Yeah, I thought it was too high. I mean, it was... <clears throat> <sighs> oh, all right. I'm that's crazy. Yo, the man didn't even ask. He just offered up the keys. That's crazy. Same here, I can back up through anything. Ooh. I see that stop sign though. Uh -huh.
not with the car accident. It was in that moment, but it was not in the car. That's all I'm saying. Wait, wait. Oh! Oh! Can oh! no. it go any further? I will fight. Get that shot. There's no way. Oh! Oh! Hold on. Oh, yeah, this one don't got it. Hey! Hey! Shot hey. Come back and be like, yes, they did not. And be like, yes, they left. Okay, I can say and be truthful that I came back. But they left. <laughs> yeah. So, so you think you were oh, you saw you play the phone. Yeah. Send me that, bro. Yeah. Like, I'm a rapper's rapper, bro. Bro, you had a bro, bro. I think you really need to push that, bro. Listen, I'm a maniacal maniac, wishing for a miracle through this lyrical lumberjack, chopping through like a linebacker, acrobatical ass flat. You come through like a linebacker. Come on, bro. The question people would ask after seeing the film is, what was your budget? I'm not counting the post-production hours. I spent thousands of hours editing, color grading, sound design, all of that stuff into this film. That's not being counted. So that those are things that you're gonna have to learn um, on YouTube and watch YouTube videos and stuff. And you're gonna have to learn those things and become uh, decent at it to complete your film. Because one of the biggest things in a film is sound. Last thing you want is your actor A is talking, there's a car passing by, actor B is talking, there's no longer that car sound. You want it to be cohesive and smooth. So sound design is super important. And, and I always put it this way. When you're watching a movie, what you see is what you see but the sound is what you feel. So you can navigate emotions with sound. Sound design is extremely important. Uh, I, we use the De Deity S Mic 2 for the film and 99.9% .9 of what we captured on set, I was not able to use. And I actually redid all the sound design from scratch. Oh, oh shit. Hi guys, what's up? <laughs> hey, do 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 do. <laughs> Diamond encrusted seats in a G wagon. Diamond yeah. encrusted seats. Yeah, and the yellow one. The yellow one pulled up. Okay, they do so many details on the car, on the uh, computer. Wait, what? Hey, so do I need a dildo? The bag? Shoot. Boogie bro, no. Yes. How many times has this happened? This is time number four. <laughs> <laughs> time number four. We <laughs> hey, man, it never happened. <laughs> this is a professional set. Yeah. First of all, no paparazzi. No mistake. <laughs> Can't wait to start shooting in winter. Mmm. Man. Well, of course, you keep the, um, the quality. Yeah. So I, I should do it this day. No. Okay. It's fine. I know. What's your point? Um, so where the frame? Do this, say Rex, and then so I can look and then get hit. Okay, gotcha. Okay. Uh, action. Bill so long, everything's moving. Rex. Where the hell I go? Action. Uh, Bill so long, every yeah, I feel like everybody's thought about that. Like who hasn't thought about being a TV and movies? So I was like, hell yeah, Let me s sign me up. You get paid for it? Yeah, I'm so in, like, yeah, a paid acting job, that's awesome. So I did that for like two years. Um, once I turned 18, I was, once I turned 18, had a car, had a license, I was, I was gone, I was doing it. Um, what's up with this complaint culture? Because, yeah. because I, when I wrote him at first, oh, he oh. was a, Country, he was a country conservative Republican. Uh huh. But I the way it's been portrayed throughout the film is nothing like that. Um, yeah, he's definitely a lot more open. He's way more open. So I cut those certain things out of the monologue and made him just more, a little more arrogant. Yeah, we got what we need. We got the monologue done. Yeah, and that monologue is pretty heavy. That monologue was pretty damn heavy. How long did it take us to get all that done? Four hours. Four hours, Four hours for a monologue. But hey, it's worth it. Makes that monologue. Four hours for a monologue. Windows were tinted black and uh, the lights, the headlights. It made the toast seem like a pillar. That's sick. So a whole family. Nah, it's not a family. It's like a family. Oh, word? Like Someone's birthday, they were getting lit when he started spitting the lyrics. Hey man, we out here in Atlanta doing a monologue for one of the scenes where Rex gets knocked out and he goes into a dream state. So we out here just guerrilla style shooting and just really coming up with some 
some pretty cool shots that's showcasing Atlanta, like this beautiful artwork right here, and uh, just really uh, diving into the culture. Another question I get asked is, you know, how did you edit? In order for us to, to meet that deadline of a year, I would edit every scene that we shot. So if we shot scene two, four, and six, during the weekdays, I would edit scene two, four, and six and render them out as two, four, and six. So when it came time for that big timeline to add the sounds and voices and stuff, I would just lay it like Lego, scene one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, because I already knew where I wanted the scenes. And because I pre-edited the scenes, it was easier to kind of fit it that way. Uh, I used no LUTs. At first I tried to use LUTs. I was like, okay, this is a lot easier, but I didn't like the, the way the colors came out. I was going for a super saturated, super colorful, uh, making it pop as much as I possibly can without breaking the footage. LUTs weren't doing it for me. So I learned how to color grade and I just color graded from scratch. And it took a lot of effort and a lot of different renders because there's a few things in this movie that we did that's never been done or I haven't seen it in film before. So it's, it's nice little touches that we added in there that I'm excited for and I'm excited for all of you to watch. Should I go up here and ride? Or should I keep going to Slutty Vegan? What do you think? I mean, would this take us another way to Slutty Vegan? No, because Slutty Vegan is like, I think it's on the other side where, I don't think, this isn't like main, main Atlanta, right? Uh-huh. But there, I mean, there still might be some dope stuff here. Maybe. There could be, they very well could be. I, I don't know Atlanta that well. I've driven through this city a couple times, but. Could we pull up at Lennox Mall? They, they always run for everybody's running through there. No, no, because you can't. So yeah, right now, we're just driving through Atlanta, trying to find uh, trying to find good spots, basically, to film this monologue. It's gonna be in multiple multiple spots each line, so. It's hot. I'm getting nowhere now. At least we're in the shade right now, though. Oh yeah, shade is good. All right, let's go, action. It's hard to hold it in, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I like that. If we did something like more about with him and I, since it's just us two. Oh yeah, you're right. Just yeah, because it is just like, you guys, so. Maybe he's saying something like, I don't know, maybe you want something can. to drink or something? Maybe guys. And I take just... it like very, like, oh, oh my God, he wants to buy me something. Hey. So much sass in that. That was sick. I just cut to people's backyards to make it quicker. Mm. <laughs> I was channeling your inner mean girl. Yeah. Your inner Regina George. Yes, because we're going to go downtown Roswell and just shoot like solos together or maybe just us just walking. What made you decide to get into acting? Well, um, I was actually discovered at a mall when I was 12 years old. Just kidding. <laughs> I feel like that's everybody's story, but actually um, I just, I always wanted to, to pursue it. My mom didn't want me to be a child actor, um, but I said, sorry mom, I'm, I'm gonna go after it. I decided to start chasing after it officially when I was 23. And um, I moved out to Los Angeles, just kind of went for it, and um, lived out there for a couple of years. And I actually kind of got burnt out. Um, <laughs> thank you. You're welcome. All right, so in this line, it's the COVID joke. Can't believe you broke up with her, uh, she filled with her ex-husband. And then I'm gonna go in the car and go. So record, even I'm gonna turn the car and, and pretend to pull forward. So the actors I casted were phenomenal. Like 95% of the film, it's first time actors. They're all non-union. I actually uh, was SAG and after, and to make this film, I became FICOR. Now, the reason why I did that is because it would cost me more to make it a SAG modified low budget film than to go and do it non-union. Um, the finances were very limited for this film and I wanted actors that were hungry, right? Majority of people on Sundays, we only filmed on Sundays for about four or five hours. On Sundays, you're not doing anything. You're watching Netflix, you're hanging out with your friends. 
So if you're someone like me and you're a go-getter and you're, you want to get after it and you want to act or you want to be in the, the business or whatever, then you have to make sacrifices. The actors that I used were all phenomenal. Rachel Sanchez did a fantastic job. Christopher Jeffries did a fantastic job. Uh, Christopher Dion killed it as Bookie Bruno. Um, Randy Reno, you know, Bradley Johnson, Doc Watson, my brother's first time in front of the camera, Nathan Lohman. You know, each of these characters did such a good job um, in the film that I was blown away. Like they say you get better quality actors, uh, you know, if you go SAG and stuff like that. Well, I'm sure you do because they have more experience, but in the same breath, I would disagree. You just have to to let someone be free and creative and not be uh, constricted and afraid of messing up a line or doing something bad and just let them be. Let them have freedoms to to change lines and, and, and add their touch to it. That's what I did with this uh, film and it turned out great. You know, they all did a great job. When you watch the film, it's 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 it does its job. You know, the whole purpose of Rex Park, especially with 2020, is to make people laugh. That's it. If you laugh one time watching the film, I did my job. That's it. I brought a moment of joy to you. And that was the whole purpose of the film. The actors, they all did phenomenal jobs. You wouldn't know that it's their first time uh, on film uh, or in a movie like this. And I'll tell you right now that a lot of them um, I'll continue to use for every film that I do. The Kind of like Adam Sandler. That's exactly the goal is to use the same community of actors because they've done such a great job. And I want them to elevate to the highest uh, of highs. I want them to do like beyond the films that I do. I want them to get booked by Steven Spielberg and, and become big Hollywood stars. That would be absolutely phenomenal and that would make me so happy. So I will just continue to create and continue to make films and continue to help elevate them as well. Um, you know, it's it brings a lot of joy to my heart. Edgy, let's see. Cut out that background line. I got another wig for Miss uh, Detective Larson, huh? Bye. I look like a goddess. Beautiful, beautiful. <laughs> Yeah, this is it. me getting ready for Miss London. You gotta do what you gotta do. Hand it over. Oh shit, it's about to die. Yeah. He look good on camera though, bro. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Yeah, this is my this is my this is my throne. Oh, yes, sir. Seat. You said something about to die, and I thought you were talking about us. Oh, I can't. I like, oh my he god. Said, Hold on. No, Park's gonna get it on video. <laughs> Park it right now. <laughs> Damn, that'll be dark as hell, bro. <laughs> Fuck. What you didn't know this was a this is a documentary on Final Destination? Oh, that's oh shit. <laughs> This is a good question. What was it like filming um, Rex Park on a low budget? It was fun. It was so much fun. It was a great learning experience that I'll take into Four Amigos. It was like the mistakes that I made, some of the things that I did that I, I would like to do differently, I know that in my next film, I won't do. I know what I need. Um, one of the biggest takeaways that I realized um, that I needed that were just two powerful things, a uh, more powerful light source and, uh, and more range in the lens. So the reason why I went with a zoom lens, like an 1835 is because the time it takes to swap out lenses, 35, 55, 24, that 30 seconds, one minute increments over a course of four hours now becomes 15, 20 minutes. We could have got a scene out the way. It's too crucial. So I went with zoom lenses. 
Um, and the focal range that I wanted, I, it would have been nice to go from 35 to 55, right? That 55 is kind of that sweet spot. So for the next film, I'll probably use the Canon 17 to 55, 2.8 older lens compared to the Sigma 18 to 35, but it has more range. It has image stabilization. It goes to 2.8 instead of 1.8. Canon colors I tend to really like. So, you know, you, you have to play within the field that you have and just kind of work it. And then bounce it like that. Left, right there. Can I ask something quick, Jay? Yeah. Um, so, so, so Zulu like spent it, right? Yeah. So, so say what's in that bag? Um, amigo or amiga? Uh, you know what I mean? Senorita. Senorita. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Perfect. Good suggestion. So just let my hand move up from there. Yep. Three, two, one. Action. Okay. Hey, go back to the gym. You gotta go back to the gym. Dude, the gyms are open here. Hey, my name's Connor Cox. Uh, I'm an actor here in town. Do plays, musicals. Uh, just finished an apprenticeship at the Aurora Theater over in Lawrenceville. And I grew up here actually in Alpharetta. That was perfect, dude. Not that I do stage combat, so. <laughs> well, that's why actually this actually works better because of the gray and the red. This is a different I see I location see than the lines in which we already shot. So right. then when we had the restaurant for last week, and then now we have this, that three different locations. Every scene is almost a different They're location. different. Last week we were really traveling, you know? Yeah. All right, plus, guys. Is it raining still? No, I'm, I'm listening to you. All right, let's go. And plus, I can see you color grading. I can see that red will be popping. Yeah. Hey, well, can you grab some, brother? Hey, oh, Talk this guy here, I, I love this guy, man. Jay, man, is a freaking, he's the Asian Adam Sandler, bro. You know, and this this is part one, but we got bigger dreams than this. Part two, part three, part four, part 10 is space. You know what I'm saying? Dude. But I already know, bro, it's really, really overjoyed, man. I'm happy to be part of the project. And, you know, it feel good not to pay, like, get all the Thug Road auditions or slave shit, you know? It's, it's, it's finally cool to be me. The blacks is me. Because they want to do um, a like collaboration with the the uh, spa place and the pool. And then that's. Oh, yeah. so are you skateboard? Nah. <laughs> that's how we met. I, I, okay. Uh, how did you How did you find out about this? They found me, obviously. So what do you What do you do outside of um, acting in movies and stuff like that? I'm or is a this professional your professional wrestler, the best of your generation. You can find me on randy.reno, facebook.com. Get some merch. I know a lot of you people looking a little raggy out there. My merch looks so good on you. So where, where do you uh, where do you wrestle at? Where All can around people the world, find you? man. Worldwide known. Been in Barbados, America. That's only two countries yet, but everyone's been asking. All right, all right. So, trying to do an interview over here. Fuck you, Reno. See, I got fans everywhere. That's how I roll. <laughs> Come on, man. So how What's did up? you how did you get into wrestling? Got into re wrestling got into me. Look at me. Why would I not be a wrestler? Anything Understandable. Else? Understandable. Good point. Good point. So, shooting gorilla style. The place we were gonna shoot at last time, it looked good. It was a really good spot. There's a lot of noise, a lot of stuff going on. Um, uh, Jason tried to get this spot for like to shoot inside for the scene, but they wanted ten grand. Yeah. We don't have that kind of money. So, you know. So, uh, yeah, I gotta be a little quiet. They're filming at the moment. But, uh, yeah, it's free to shoot outside. Just not gonna shoot the name. Don't hate the play, I hate the game, right? Working on the set of Rex Park. Where do I even start? It's like no other. Like, it wasn't. It wasn't the same experience as any other film set I was on. Quite frankly, it was a whole lot better. Like, it was a lot more fun. Um, I'm used to getting on set, having production crew, having a crew for specific lighting, having crew for sound, having crew for...
camera, having having a specific dedicated crew to whatever is going on, um, to every single department. And you know, big trucks full of equipment and just a bunch of stuff. Just a bunch of stuff, everything you could possibly need. But this film, we had three, it was a three man crew. It was Jason, who's the lead actor, He's the editor, he's the director, the producer, the director of photography, the cinematographer. He was the lighting designer as well. He figured out where to put all the lights. He literally did everything. Like, he was locations. He was production. He, he was literally everything the rest of the crew should be. I was there as moral support as well as to help with lighting, help with uh, holding the microphone, to being the boom operator. Um, and sometimes I got to work the camera when he was on screen. And the same thing with his little brother, Nathan. So it was me, Jason, and his brother, Nathan. And that was it. Working with that cast, I made new friends. I made new lifelong friends that I'll continue to use in every film that I ever do. I'll go to them first and be like, hey, do you want to play this role? Yes or no? And we've kind of built that bond with this first film uh, that they trust me to deliver them a quality project and I trust them to deliver a great performance. And it's just that great balance and a great experience to, to go through. Uh, when you when you work with people that have the same passion and the same goals of wanting to create and wanting to share their art and their artistry with the world, so it was it was an absolute blast and I can't wait to shoot the next one. Let's do it, bro. Whatever you want, bro. To hey, where? You, you, you don't want to uh, yeah, yeah. Nah, no, I'm just want to make sure it's okay with you guys. So we can load up. One, two, uh, one more person in my car and probably take one more car and you go. I, I can take. Where I are we going? Throw. It's a it's a bowling alley that's closed. Hey, let's get my uh, car cleaned up. Oh, which one? Um, it was my first time, so I really had no prior experience before that, other than like just shadowing my brother when he was shooting commercial videos. And I could say I learned a, a bit from it, but being on an actual movie set and having to like start and pick things up and having to like learn it actually, and like the, af the effort that goes into it, it's like really immersive. So all your attention is like directed onto like one thing at a time. We just get after it, you know. It's a fun experience. Um, I'm really appreciative for that. Appreciative. <laughs> I almost had it. I almost had it, bro. See, this is fine. And the reason why it's fine is because when you say boogie, you only say buh. It cuts away so you don't get the second boogie. All oh, shit, then it comes back to the all oh, shit. So as long as all oh, shit matches in that buh, we're Gucci. So a question that I get is what motivates you uh, to make film? And I know I spoke about this earlier, but it's really about boosting Asian American cinematographers, directors, actors, writers in the industry and building that respect, building that that we can be box office as well, building that that thing where it's like, we can be the action star. We can be the romantic comedic lead. We can be these things and it does well, that there's an audience for it. That's the biggest motivator for me is for the current generation and for the next generation. That's literally the only thing that motivates me. Um, one of the reasons why I play the lead role for the things that I write and direct is because I know that I'm consistent. I know that I'll show up and I know that I can get it done. But it's the, it's the biggest motivating factor for me. It's really the only thing that continues to push me to continue to write and continue to make these bigger and bigger films, uh, especially like Four Amigos. It's a tuner film, um, kind of like Fast and the Furious 1. It's so big in the sense where it's almost like you cannot believe that this small crew of people are gonna get it done and we're gonna get it done no matter what, no matter if it takes three years, but we're gonna get it done. Uh, that's how we do it. That's how we do it. Knocking out multiple scenes in one day. Persistence always beats laziness. You got it? Yep. Actually, that might be good too. When you knock, you knock the gun. Damn, I got a 40 minute drive. You did that on purpose. Yeah. Oh, it's crazy to live in Marietta. Yeah, four, four and a half hour back. Two of them shot. You got a shot today? 
Yeah, yeah, because I got a, I got an eye appointment tomorrow. Oh, dang. That's exactly. how I feel. At the end day with all captains. He got that scene. Like, you did a good job, you bro. Did song you take I appreciate you, man. Of course, man. <laughs> you did a good job. You know, it's one of those things where it's like, if I don't do it, who's going to do it? And if I don't do it now, when is somebody going to do it? Because I waited for 15 years and it never got done. And that's been the motiv that motivating factor for me. It's like, if you don't do it, nobody's going to do it. Not to say that they won't do it in another 10 years, but they're not going to do it now. And I just really want to help boost the Asian American creative community to, to know that, that you can do it. Know that, that anybody of color, anybody of any ethnicity, that you can do it. Because currently we don't have a representation. If you don't have a representation and you're Turkish or you're Argentinian and you don't have, create that representation, create that story because nobody's gonna write a story and from your perspective and put you in that role if they're not your race or your ethnicity, they can't. They're gonna write something that they see because that's what they see when they look in the mirror. So if you wanna create change in any industry, you have to be the change. You have to start it. If you wait, it may never get done. And when it gets done, it just may be too late. Okay. <laughs> right, that's good. So we just got done filming uh, a really funny scene, honestly. We finished this whole thing. You we're going to switch it up. Be like, oh man, this lap track doesn't actually work. And then this. Spice come off. Right, nope. And you're like, oh, okay, I kind of get an idea. Yeah, because I've been, I've been had something, but I didn't, but it's like, I have a lot of, it's not, it's not to the magnitude who I thought it would be, you know what I'm saying? To yeah. me, I'm like, okay, this shit might be fun as hell, it's cool as hell, but this shit like some dramatic goddamn anime shit going on. Like, you know what I'm saying? It's a kung fu. Cause that scene in the beginning, bro, I gonna lie, that shit was fucking tough. Who, who, who was um, using the gimbal or the drone? Nothing, we used the, uh, oh, I did. We used the drone in the beginning. In the beginning? To scale the building. That, yeah. That that is to it like time perfectly. Like everybody, like this is. Woo! I can lie, bro. Thank you. Like, I haven't even put me on here, bro. I ain't gonna lie. You funny, yo. Oh man, I appreciate you. But that's you funny. though, man. That's you. No. You know. It's just we just got different humor, but that's why it works. Thank you. Yeah. It's just different humor. That's the the biggest motivating factor. I have a wife and kid that I love so much, and they're my life. They're everything. I'm happy in that department. I'm not concerned. So. For these films that I'm doing, it's it's beyond me. It's about giving these actors an opportunity to shine. It's about uh, you know helping other people achieve their goals and their dreams. And it's about showing you know the Asian Americans out there that hey, you can do great things and big things in Hollywood too. You just have to do it. Just you just have to do it. Get that out, all right? That's real. <laughs> Don't believe about all yeah. this shit. Yeah, that out. So it's more of a live, live thing. Yeah. Oh, that's yeah. tough, man. Where you wrestle at? Um, I wrestle all around here. I'm still an uh, indie guy right now. Oh, that's cool. I almost want to see indie fights. I don't never like. I never know where indie spots be at. Right. Yeah. That's cool. I wrestle mostly in Morrow, Georgia, uh -huh. Knoxville, Tennessee, uh, like Piedmont, Alabama. Like, Knoxville, Tennessee. Yeah, like small ass little that's tough. bars, middle schools. Really? Wherever they hire me, man. Wherever they hire me. No, that's cool, man. Yeah, that's like underground kind of stuff, too. The big leagues come calling eventually. That's All right, the goal. Still come, bro. That's still the goal, come. man. That's where the money is. Exactly, man. What, what's your, what's your uh, gimmick? Like, what's your thing? I'm like a washed up Las Vegas. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't be able to make this film without my brother, um, Nathan Lohman, without, you know, my friend Luke Dinges. I just wouldn't have been able to do it without them because you can only do so much by yourself. You have to have a team. You have to have a team. You have to have somebody to be able to, you know, hold the camera and someone to bounce the light. Like, it's just, you have to build that team and you gotta make sure that when your films do well, that you make sure that you bring them along and you elevate them as well. No, I'm hitting you with that ball right now. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, what is this, 16? That's tough, bro. Hey, Will, can you put the up? <laughs> it's awesome, bro. Hey, Zulu, you gonna, um, you know what? We'll have you with the backpack, no Buddha, until they grab it. Uh, it's all up. Yeah. Yeah, I had that issue. <laughs> Yo, let us out. <laughs> let us out, you got the child lock. <laughs> because everything else is gonna be out of focus. Okay. But we're not worried about that. We'll get this done and then if we have time. Oh, okay. Sounds good. Right there, yeah. 
Another question I get is, will you make another film? Absolutely. We're currently already working on Four Amigos. You know, I wrote Four Amigos in a week and I was just so inspired by it. And again, it's not about the time. It doesn't matter if it takes you a year, but I dedicated myself to a page a day and then it just went crazy. The first day I wrote like three pages, the next day I wrote like 15 pages, the next day I wrote like 20 pages, and it just, it just kept going. And I did all this while working a full-time job, while being a father, while being a husband, while being there, while paying attention to my family, while working my job and being there whenever they need me. It's one of those things where you just have to commit yourself and just do it. Don't make excuses on how you cannot do something. Tell yourself how you can do anything. Um, Four Amigos, it's kind of like Fast and Furious 1. It's around the tuna community in Atlanta. And it's a film that I'm so excited to, to do. You know, it's so big and, and there's so many things that go, that's going on into it. It's action. It's impactful. You know, the story goes super left and then all of a sudden it goes right. I'll probably make a third film after that and a fourth and a fifth. And it's weird because I always tell myself like, okay, after this film, I'm done. I'm good. But there's that, there's that fire. There's that thing that ignites you that you just, you're motivated and you just go, go, go. And that's kind of what I do. I just go, go, go. So be on the lookout for Four Amigos. Um, it's already in pre-production. We start filming in two months. Uh, locations have already been locked. Um, you know, the big car scene is kind of the first thing we'll shoot. So it's... It's very exciting. Hey, well, move my move the car on this side of the Zuzu. Hey, do I need to do the film? Nah, you straight. Actually, you know what? Yeah, let's move the Zuzu uh -huh. over here so I can get a super wide shot. Got gotcha. you. The Zuzu works for me. Works for me. Y'all know Zuzu's dirty. Yeah. What? The fellow milk, yo. Oh, we I feel like we talked about this before. I didn't you, you should have seen your face. Oh no, oh no, I'm gonna die. <laughs> hey, no, for real. How does it feel to have shit on your lip? Is it contagious? But you don't know that I'm about to get you with that karate top. One of the big questions I get is, you know, what would you say to all your fellow filmmakers out there? And this is my message to you. If you have a script, you have an idea, you have a log line, create the story. Find a way to shoot the story. It doesn't matter if you're shooting on a 1080p, on your cell phone, on an old camera from your grandfather, shoot it, create. The only way you get better, the only way you can get to those jobs where people are paying you $100,000 or $40,000 or whatever to shoot, is if you continue to shoot and you continue to get better and you continue to do well and build a portfolio and build um, yourself up. That's the only way. On the back of your neck, lick your earlobe, and up. taste your elbow. Do what? Good job, good job. A plus, high five, high five. You heard that? What he said? Yeah. Punk. Woo. Okay, baby. Where was you? Where was you? Oh, <laughs> All right. Um, for this scene, over our shoulder, the focus is on them. <laughs> <laughs> the focus on us. Yep. Right the kid, man. Make sure you watch this step. You see that dip? Yeah. And then you'll be like right there. Hmm? Uh, this is camera frame, I'll tell you how it looks. Hold on. Watch out, Zulu. Step out. Step out. Yeah, come forward. Uh, go to your left. Go to your left. Come with me, boy. Every single time we filmed, not even just most of the time, every single time we filmed, we had to have the actors, while they weren't on camera, if they weren't on camera in that specific take, they would have to usually help bounce, use the bounce board, uh, hold the light bulb or hold the microphone. Like we, we had everybody doing everything. Like it was insane. Um, 
which is actually really cool because that's how you really get to know everybody. I mean, everybody was great to work with. Everybody was funny. Like, it was just, it was just a good vibe. We all became really good friends. Me and Jason are really, really close now. Um, yeah, I can't wait to work on the next film with any of these guys. Like, they're all, they feel like family now. As far as the filming's concerned, no budget filming is a lot harder than low budget filming because there's a difference between no budget and low budget. Low budget's like, yeah, you have like a couple hundred grand, maybe a million, two million, but no budget's like, yeah, you got what you need. You got camera, you got a few lights. That's about it. Hey, 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 cowboy, it ain't Halloween, boy. It ain't Halloween. He tried to, he tried to talk to me like that. He tried to talk to you like that. Oh, okay. boss man. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay, you wanna be uh -huh. no tattoo, right? Listening, skin it. Uh -huh. Say it again. Oh, okay. We got, got a links on his side. Okay, got like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cut scary. Cut scary. Cut scary. Keep going. Keep going. That's what's up. Very human. It's a ridiculously humid day. I walked outside this morning at like. All right, looks super badass. 8:30, and I was like, holy shit. Yeah. Uh, don't it's look like 8:30, it's hot. Yeah. But y'all just talking because I'm gonna slow down the phone. Let's get slapped in the face by moist air. I didn't have experience behind the camera. Everything was self-taught. I I don't have anyone to lean on to to ask questions. I don't have any connections. I'm just like you, right? That just had an idea. I never had this dream of doing these things. And for some reason now I'm doing these things. So if you're somebody that you have these dreams and you want to do these things and this is your life and you're a cinephile and all you do is watch film and you absolutely love film and, and it just surrounds you and this is all you think, breathe and, and you just want to create, do it. Find a way to do it and get it done. Because if someone like myself can do it, that's none of those things then you absolutely can do it. Don't worry about the budgets, don't worry about anything. And you're gonna have people say, oh, I don't have this camera or "Or you gotta have a budget. No, talk to your family, talk to your friends, have them show up and, and, and figure it out. Work around what you have. It's not about the money, it's about the resources. Be resourceful. If you have to work and you gotta put in that overtime to get that lens, do it. The way I raised money for Rex Park and the way I'm raising money for Four Amigos is I'm doing a bunch of videos for super cheap. Typically, I, I charge a lot higher, but I'm doing them for super cheap so I can get as much as I can in possible so I can go in and buy the, the upgraded light, go and buy the drone that I broke on Rex Park that I need for Four Amigos. I have to raise money for that, so I'm doing these little odd jobs. Go find a way. Open up that hustle with inside of you and go and get it done. I believe that all of us can do it. I believe you can do it. You have to believe in yourself and you have to just get it done. There's no excuses. Excuses are for the weak. I made excuses a long time of why I didn't get booked or why I didn't get casted for this or this and that. And at the end of the day, it's just the role wasn't meant for me and I just wasn't good enough for it at that time. That's it. My yeah. man, back, back on set, <laughs> on location, I guess. Just, just helping out the crew. Oh yeah. You look like a crew member. Anything everyone needs. Oh, look, yeah. look, perfect, perfect crew member outfit right here. <laughs> exactly what you see in a movie set. Yep. You know, thing you're missing. Only what? thing you're missing is the uh, the bandana on the neck. Oh, that's bad. <laughs> What's up, homie? Last first episode, man. I peaked that. Jump about dope, bro. I ain't gonna lie, man. Oh, you liked it? You liked yeah, it? Yeah, it don't come out like that, man. Go Dude, lie. he actually deleted it yesterday. Why? Um, yeah, if he can fit. For that pull up, up shop boom, you guys get out. <laughs> yeah. You guys leave the Buddha in the car. Mm -hmm. um, and um, either Luca or him has the bag full of drugs. Uh huh. Hey, Zulu. Who I call the drugs. What's what up? it do, boo? What's up, right you right? <laughs> so we're shooting outside? Both. Mostly inside, but a little bit outside. Is this the place that we had uh, lunch at? This is the place that we... Yeah, this is the place that had that concert going on. We were about to oh, eat okay. here, and then they were like, Oh, yeah, no, you can't go on the stage. Like my line? Yeah. I'm going to take this off to wear the jacket so that I'm not sweating through this. Yeah, no, yeah, sure. 
whatever's comfortable. How you doing, man? You send out a audi hundred audition tapes and you book one. That one is the only one that matters because that one could change your life. That one movie that you make could be the differentiator between you shooting films for the rest of your life and not. It only takes one. It only takes one. That's it. Action. Parking garage is like right behind here to recreate kind of a, a Fast and the Furious-esque scene where we're kind of two cars line up, two cars each side. I do my spiel and then it goes to you. You look over, you put up a stack of cash. We have fake money. Right, boom, the other guy looks at you, boom. And just as you guys go, like five, 10 feet, right? It's not really racing, but just as you go, it cuts. Okay, awesome, thank you, Chris. Oh, wait, there's a Supra too? We had a 370 difference to Supra. <laughs> Let's figure out who owns this thing. Yeah. Who Supra is this? You're the guy, huh? How you doing, man, what's your name? So we're shooting a feature film, and we're actually today, after this, we have our big scene, and it's like we're a wrap. We've been shooting since March. Industry I definitely want to stay in. Um, so it's good knowledge to know about lights and everything, and it's even helped me when I'm on set, on professional sets, when I can actually butt in and be like, hey, what if you did this? Like, this would be a good idea. And they're like, oh yeah, yeah, that is a good idea. And then you get street cred, you know, you get you get credit in the industry and people start to notice you more when you know these things. So knowledge is power. And that's what I've learned 100 percent. Make sure you guys watch Rex Park, Curse of the Goat and Buddha when it comes out. Make sure you guys are on the lookout for Four Amigos when it comes out. Uh, Hypertude Productions. If you guys have any questions at all, message me below or email me again, guys. You can do it. I believe in you. Believe in yourself. You're amazing. Thank you so much for your time. I hope that you guys enjoyed this documentary about Rex Park. And um, until next time. It's funny how times change, like the Rolex on 50 Cent. Oh, Kevin Hart on a soul plane. Your girl's a Barbie. I will be her Ken. Yeah. Nowadays, everybody got a family rapper. But I only care about my baby living in the Hamptons. Summertime's mine if you ain't guess it. Yeah. I can handle the weight. I be bench pressing. I eat up all the doubts cooking in the kitchen. Fucking on the bed that's all white like cooked chicken. Yeah. All seasons mine like the comic salt. You can blame me for the hype. It's my fault. You say I'll never get it and it ain't meant to be. You say that shit really just to get to me. Damn. Knowing that you know all my secrets and my history. But do you? I don't condone the hate. That's why we no longer speak. Cause you mutated. Give it to me. Give it to me. I let that bar breathe. It takes a few to see. Yeah. Yeah. I let that bar breathe. It takes a few to see. Yeah. It's bringing to a old goddamn yeah saying pop Not saying got more stripes than a flannel top Cause the saying get the pop in like a button shot Give my girl more D's in a report card Cause she got them double D's like the D to my dad's yard Yeah, I let that digest for a moment You know what I'm saying, on it, love How I got so much love to give Cause she say I got your back like Nemo's fin And when we win, just let me breathe Promise I'll never change like backwards Eve I'm one over 23 like Christmas Eve Living in the present like a Christmas tree I know that I'm blessed like they crossing me Cause everybody's eating in the family Yeah